Welcome back, everyone. Another week of Taurus Talk here at SG Taurus. I'm your host, Matt LePan. This week, we're talking something that's very important in your business and not enough people are paying attention to it. That is customer service. To talk about customer service and how you can improve it, we're going to bring in Patty Gillette. Patty, thank you for coming on to the podcast. Good morning. It is a pleasure to be here. Most people who are listening probably know who you are, whether it be from working with you for a long time or some recent stuff. But for those who don't, some of our newer listeners, some of our newer dealers, can you just go into who you are, what you do right now, and how you got to where you are? Sure thing. So I work at Mitsubishi Electric. I am in the Northeast Business Unit, and I'm the Business Unit Marketing Manager. I've worked there about eight years. Prior to that, I worked right here at SG Taurus doing marketing for about 10 years, a little over 10 years. And prior to that, I worked for a utility in Lowell, Mass, and on Cape Cod. It was uh, no longer in existence, but it was Colonial Gas Company. And I did energy conservation, rate design, and marketing there as well. So that's why a lot of you will know the name. For anyone who, who was questioning it at the beginning, this is the same Patty, the Patty that you used to work with. Patty is someone who is probably more qualified than anyone you'll find out there in terms of dealing with customers and making sure that dealers are correctly working with their customers. We've had her in to teach customer service training courses at our Wilmington Mansfield branch, and we'll continue to do that. Patty, when we start off here, customer service, it's such a broad term. How would you define it, and how can a customer kind of make their own definition of what customer service is to their company? As you mentioned, we do customer service training classes for Mitsubishi Diamond Contractors, And um, we started doing these classes because we realized that there was a need and we were able to realize that because we listen to a lot of the incoming calls that come into our diamond contractors. We have call tracking numbers for them. And listening to those calls, we realized we can help them build their businesses by going through the basics of customer service. So we came up with a class um, to focus just on that. It's a half day class. It is for customer service reps, people who answer the phone, not really for salespeople. It's really focused on those folks. And we started by saying, well, what, what is customer service? How would we define customer service? And of course we went right to Google and of that's course. where we looked <laughs> for our definition. And interestingly enough, if you go to Google and do a search on what is customer service, you'll find over 5 billion search results. So we knew right then that we'd hit on a hot topic. People are really interested in customer service. And there are a couple of really great definitions of customer service that we use. So I'll go through a few of them. Customer service is a company's ability to take care of the customer's wants and needs. Customer service is displaying a professional, positive, polite, proactive, and punctual attitude. Now, I like that one because nowadays with the internet, people, it's crazy, but they're more impatient than they ever were. So punctual is really important in our business. And finally, customer service is an attitude that can be summed up as I care and I can do it. When we look over some of those definitions, the the five P's one is really one that I know that I kind of latch onto that one a little bit, and you brought it up, punctual. We live in an on-demand society, and it's getting more on-demand by the day. Some call it the Amazon effect. I ordered something I wanted tomorrow. I ordered this service I want done today. Why is punctuality such an important factor out of those five Ps? Obviously, we know they're all important, but you know, you touched on it briefly, but if you can go a little deeper, why is punctuality really the, the one that we want to focus on here? So um, you hit on it partly. People have become just used to being able to get things when they want them and it is the amazon factor but in our industry hvac we have another factor going on and that is people really don't think of our service until they need it so in the northeast we have maybe eight weeks of summer and most people don't think about air conditioning until the first two days of 90 degree temperatures and then everybody calls at the same time So our HVAC contractors are dealing with a kind of unique proposition in that they get an awful lot of business requests during a time when they probably can't staff up to serve everybody. So part of this whole customer service paradigm is helping HVAC contractors figure out how to juggle that and manage people's expectations. You mean people aren't thinking about air conditioning right now when there's 
30 inches of snow on the ground outside. We wish they were, <laughs> but they're not. <laughs> nope. Another definition that was in there is the I care aspect of things. We've touched on this in your training. When you look at a customer, right, and define a customer, one of the powerful things I took out of one of your recent trainings was we are not doing a favor for the customer. The customer is doing a favor for us by choosing us. Can you dive a little deeper into what a customer is and why that, you know, that's when you think about it right off the bat, that's not exactly where you go. You think of we're providing the service, but a customer has to seek you out and choose you. You're absolutely right, Matt. So we have what we call the commandments of what is a customer. Great customer service reps keep this list right at their desk when they answer the phone to remind them of how important a customer is. So we start off by saying the customer is the most important person in any business. And it's kind of funny when we do these classes, sometimes we have business owners in the class. And of course, they're really important. And it's their blood, sweat, and tears that founded the company. But we all know, and everyone has to keep in mind, that until you sell something to a customer, you're not going to be in business. So it's all about realizing that the customer is the most important person in the business. Some other things to keep in mind, as you mentioned, the customer is not dependent upon us. We're dependent upon them. They're doing us a favor when they call us. So make sure they recognize that when you answer the phone. A customer is someone who comes to us with needs and they want us to solve those needs. So we joke and we talk about the fact when we do this class that people don't generally sit around and say, hey, we've got some free time. Let's call an HVAC company and chat with them. No, they only call when they have no heat or when they need air conditioning. So when they make that call, most often they want to hang up with an appointment. And if you can't do that on the call, you're not serving your customers. Yeah, it's not often that uh, you're gonna get someone saying, oh, in, in six months, I think I wanna do this, I think I wanna do that. It is, I got home from work today and it's 10 degrees out and I'm worried my pipes are gonna freeze, I need someone here now. And as much of a pain as that can seem like, the I need it now, I want it now, all of that, it's really, like you said, it's important to remember this person is doing a service for you by choosing you as the person they called. There's a lot of dealers out there, a lot of different brands, and they're choosing you as the person that they want to reach out to. So like you said, we get some furrowed brows when we say the most important person in the company is the customer, but with no customer, there is no company. And I know that you had a, a great quote that you brought up in some of the trainings. And can you just reiterate that for us? Sure. So it's a quote by Henry Ford. And it is, it, it is not the employer who pays the wages. Employers only handle the money. It is the customer who pays the wages. Such an important thing to keep in mind. Yeah, and it's so true. Like I said, if, if you don't have customers, you don't have business. Now, when a customer calls, the last thing you want to do is have that phone hang up and have a negative experience for that customer because that person's not coming back. And we all know it costs a lot more to get a new customer than it does to keep your old ones. What are some of the ways that folks can retain their customers? And what are some of the ways that folks lose customers from the research that you've done? So we have a lot of fun with this. When we do the training classes, we watch a really kind of fun video about customer service and really not customer service, terrible customer service. But the facts show us this that customers leave a company, 68% of customers leave a company because of an attitude of indifference expressed by an employee. 14% of customers leave a company due to their dissatisfaction with the product or method of conducting business. So 82% of existing customers won't come back as customers in the future because of factors that our customer service reps can impact every single day. That's a huge, huge thing to consider. In, in class, we ask the group, hey, what's better? Is it more expensive to add a new customer or to retain an existing customer? And pretty quickly, everyone says, oh, it's much more expensive to add a new customer. So then once they realize their impact on keeping existing customers, you see the light bulb go off and people realize, hey, this is really important. Because as we say in class, most consumers are pretty skeptical about heating and air conditioning. They don't know much about it. And what happens when you don't know, you get nervous. 
So think someone's trying to take advantage of you, you kind of put up barriers. The first person who has to deal with that is the person at an HVAC company who answers the phone. So what we do at Mitsubishi, and you know this, we do tons of training. I'd say we are honestly the best in terms of training technicians, but what we hadn't thought about till this class is how important it is to train customer service reps because hey, you're not gonna get to the technician stage if you don't have a good customer service rep who can close the call and set an appointment. So those people are really, really important and we wanna encourage them to realize how important they are to the success of their business. And so we know we have a lot of business owners that listen to the podcast. That's why it's so important to create a culture around your office of positivity and positive thinking. You know, when someone picks up a phone and you hear, hello, and you hear the sigh, you hear the, it almost sounds like you're an inconvenience on their day. I don't care if it's heating and air conditioning or if it's a pizza delivery place. That person's going to go, oh, they, they don't want me. They don't want me as their customer. And what you want to do is create an atmosphere in which the customer feels that you want to be giving them your services. It's not an easy thing to do. It's really not. There are going to be days where a customer service rep is sitting in an office and the phone hasn't stopped ringing. They have a coffee that's been sitting there for two hours. It's now ice cold and it's been a long day already. And they look at the clock, it's 930 in the morning. Someone calls and says, I have no heat. I need someone out here today. What can a customer service rep do to give that feeling of positivity and to make sure that the person on the other end of the phone feels wanted by your company? Matt, such a great question. So I'll go over what we call our 10 commandments of customer service. Um, And I think that'll kind of answer the question. So first thing everyone has to keep in mind is that the customer who's calling on the phone is never an interruption. They can hear it. So because when we're talking about phones here, consumers can't see your face, it's really important that you relay through your voice that you're enthusiastic about talking to them. So they have to think in here in your voice when they call, hey, you're the most important thing to me right now. And we go through some kind of techniques that customer service reps can use in their office to kind of encourage other people not to interrupt them when they're on the phone. Unless there is a fire in the building, when someone calls, you're gonna be making money for the company. Don't bug me, right? Mm -hmm. So um, that's the first rule. Greet every customer with a friendly smile. It sounds a little bit corny, but I'm gonna bet that if you're listening to me now, you can tell that I'm smiling, right? You can hear a smile over the phone. So that's really important. Call customers by their name. Uh, Dale Carnegie says, nothing is as sweet as the sound of the customer's name or someone's name. So make sure when someone calls, you jot their name down and use their name in conversation. They can tell you're listening then. The fourth one is remember that you are the company. Again, most people don't know much about HVAC. Most people have never called an HVAC company. So when they get someone on the phone, their first impression of that company is the person who answers the phone. The fifth one is never argue with the customer. I know it's hard. I know it's hard. (laughs) The the hardest of all these commandments. (laughs) It truly is very difficult when um, people are being unreasonable. The weather is either very hot or very cold. You've got tons of people frustrated, but you're not going to win that argument. We depend on those customers, right? So those are our top five. I'll give you the next five. Six is never say, I don't know. So this is kind of tricky, especially for new employees, because of course you don't know everything when you're new. But in the class, we talk about some techniques for handling that um, when somebody asks you about a specific, like for example, on Mitsubishi's website, and I see this hyperheat system, what does that mean? Well, if a customer service rep has only worked there one week, they don't know, possibly. But a nice answer is, listen, that's a really great question. So when we send our salesperson out to your house, we're going to make sure I'm going to jot down that you're interested in hyperheat. And when our salesperson comes out, he'll be ready to talk to you about hyperheat. So that's kind of one way to respond to that. I don't know. Remember, customer pays your wages. That's commandment number seven. And we sneak it in as much as we can. It's so important to think about customers. The eighth one is state things in a positive way. The ninth one is brighten every customer's day. And the tenth one is always go the extra mile. 
And it's great talking with Patty. We're talking customer service with Patty Gillette from Mitsubishi Electric. Patty's going to be back next week on Taurus Talk to continue the conversation. We've gotten into a lot of great stuff here with Patty. And she has so much more information to give that we want to make sure that it's not too much out there for you to digest. We're going to be back with Patty next week. want to thank you for tuning in. Make sure to subscribe to the podcast. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, anywhere you can find a podcast, you can find us. Just search Taurus Talk. Follow along on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Use the hashtag Taurus Talk. And as always, you can catch all of our podcasts on our website, sgtaurus.com backslash podcasts. I want to thank you again for tuning in. We'll see you next week once again with Patty on Taurus Talk.